Hello everyone, and a very warm welcome to your Presbytery of Oma online service. My name is Reverend Jonathan Cowan, and I'm the minister at Mountjoy and Romliga Presbyterian Churches. And for the past year, it has been my pleasure to have been Presbytery moderator. And so I welcome you to this service. Our Presbytery is comprised of 40 congregations scattered over a large geographical area from counties Tyrone and Fermanagh. And I trust that as we join together from around our presbytery and even further afield, that we will feel united together with our Presbyterian family in our worship of God. I have invited the various vacant congregations, as well as my own two churches, Mountjoy and Drumliga, to take part in this service of worship. We are also very grateful today that we have the Reverend Rob Craig, a former moderator of the General Assembly, and retired minister from Kilfenan Presbyterian Church, who will bring a message from God's Word. For over a year now, we have all been living with the implications of COVID-19, and all of our routines and so much of our church life has been disrupted. And perhaps today you're tired and weary of it all. Well, then you need to hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. And we use them as our call to worship from Isaiah chapter 40. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Once again. May we put our hope in the Lord, the Lord who is amongst us to strengthen us and to help us. Our first praise item is the hymn, Behold Our God, which is based on the words from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40. It reminds us that there is no one like our God. And so we come now to worship our God as we sing, Behold Our God. And this will be sung for us by Drumliga Church Choir. Thank you. 
us join together now in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we unite from around our presbytery and beyond to worship you. We come and adore you. We come to behold you in all your greatness. There is no one like you. You are all wise, all sovereign. There is no one like you. You have no equal. You are the everlasting God, the creator of this world. You are the creator of all things. And so we rejoice to be in your presence and to give you our adoration. Father God, we thank you that you are the living God and that you draw alongside us now in love. And we thank you that you showed your love as you sent your only son, the Lord Jesus, into the world, who was nailed to a cross, bearing all our sin and shame upon himself so that we could be forgiven. And so we thank you for your love. And may we be amazed today at how deep your love is for each one of us. And we thank you that nothing can separate us from your love, not even COVID-19. Father God, may we be united together in this presbytery online service, wherever we're watching in. May we be united together by your Holy Spirit. And may your Holy Spirit help us to see you and to hear you. May your Holy Spirit help us to glorify and honour you. And so, Father God, we, we worship you today. But, Father, as we worship you, we are conscious of our sin. Our sins, they are many. We have failed you in thought, word and deed. Forgive us when we have been more concerned about our own needs than the needs of our wider presbytery or the wider world. Cleanse us from all our sin through Jesus who died and shed his blood. And grant us grace so that we would truly love you and live for you. Give us a greater vision of you and your love for us and for your people. So we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit today. Be pleased with our worship, and to you be all the glory and praise that's due to your great name. Amen. We now turn to read God's Word. Kyle Hempton from Gordon Presbyterian Church will read from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 25. These words were written to people who were under pressure, much in the same way that we have been for the past year. The writer Isaiah would say that we are to draw close to God and draw strength from him. So let's listen to God's word, Isaiah 40 from verse 25. After this, the choir from Dromore and Drumquin Presbyterian churches will sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. 40 verse 25 to whom can the holy god be compared is there anyone else like him look up at the sky who created the stars you see the one who leads them out like an army he knows how many there are and calls each one by name his power is so great not one lamb is ever missing israel why then do you complain that the lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice don't you know haven't you heard the Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak.
We turn again now to read God's Word, and this time from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 9. And Carol Moore from Newton Stewart Presbyterian Church will read God's Word. And after this, Reverend Rob Craig will bring a message from this passage from Revelation, chapter 1. So let us hear God's Word. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. I turned round to see the, the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash round his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive for ever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later, the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Well, first of all, let me begin with a word of thanks uh, to you, uh, congregations, ministers of the Oma Presbytery, uh, for the kind invitation to join with you in your United Presbytery service this morning, and in particular to Jonathan Cowan uh, as the moderator of Presbytery, who liaised with me in preparation for today. It is my hope and prayer, along with you, that this service together may give us a sense of belonging together in the body of Christ, and that for my colleagues, it will give you a brief respite from uh, preparing, preaching, and uploading for yet another Sunday service. And in case you're wondering which church building uh, this has been recorded in, I'm not in any of the church buildings of the Oma Presbytery. Uh, I'm standing in the pulpit of the New Row Presbyterian Church in Colrain. Uh, I do some part-time work here alongside the minister, the Reverend Robert McMullen, and I appreciate the opportunity to record here for your service. We come to the Lord now in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we turn to your word, it is always with a prayer that as you inspired your word to be written, so now by your spirit, you will speak quietly to our hearts that as well as hearing a human voice, we will hear your voice. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On my iPhone, I have not only hundreds, but thousands of photographs which I've taken over the years, many of which I've forgotten, but they're there. And I have chosen one of those photographs to be the wallpaper. It means that every time I pick up the phone and look at it, the first thing I see is a photograph of my wife. You see, I'm an old romantic at heart. And I'm not the only one. I'm sure that most of you on your smartphones have a photograph of someone very important to you. It could be your husband or your wife. It might be your children or your grandchildren. And every time you pick up the smartphone and look, it flashes, and there is your loved one. 
I like to think of the book of the Revelation a bit like the, a smartphone full of lots of pictures. In this book, you can find pictures of choirs, of horses, a great serpent or dragon, women, cities. But first and foremost, when you pick up the book of the Revelation, the first picture you see, the first picture that John saw, is a picture or a vision of Jesus in his power and in his glory. John was commissioned to write and to send what he saw, this revelation to the seven churches uh, in an area of what is today Western Turkey. We might think of them uh, like ourselves as a presbytery, the presbytery of Asia Minor. In one sense, they and we live in worlds that are totally different from one another. They were facing persecution as we have been facing a pandemic. But despite the outward differences, they must have had the same kinds of questions that have been running around in our minds and in our congregations over this past 11 to 12 months. The questions like, when is it going to end? When can we get back to the way things used to be? Or what will church be like when this is over? And even the deeper questions, where are you, Lord, in all of this? What are you doing? And why is this happening to us at this time? The vision of the Lord, which John received and forwarded to the Christians of his day, has a lot of striking similarities to a vision which Daniel records, or which is recorded for us in Daniel chapter 7. You may want to read that in your own time. But of more immediate interest to us this morning is what this vision conveys to us about the Lord. As we continue to face the pandemic and hopefully the gradual and continuing easing of restrictions. What is it that John saw and hear and he relates to us? Well, first of all, John saw the Lord among the lampstands. John saw that the Lord is among the lampstands. It is actually at the end of the chapter that it is revealed to us that these lampstands represent the seven churches of that presbytery area and to whom he is writing. And a key part of the message they are to understand is this, that the Lord is with them, that he is among them. And just as Christians and congregations living through persecution needed to hear that message, so today, Christians and congregations who have been living through the pandemic, we need to hear the same message again and again. That the Lord has not gone a wall, absent without leave. Rather, he is present with and among the 40 or so congregations of the Oma Presbytery. The Lord is with us. It's my understanding that of all of the promises and reassurances that God gives his people in the scriptures, the most repeated promise is this promise to be with his people. I think of Joshua facing the daunting task of having to give leadership upon the death of Moses and take the people into the promised land. And he receives right at the beginning as part of his commission the promise, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I think of the exiles being driven from Jerusalem into Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar, and they hear through Isaiah this promise, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I think of the Lord in some of the last words to the disciples recorded for us in Matthew's Gospel, promised to them as they carry on his mission, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And yet, if we're honest, As the pandemic has driven us into isolation so that we cannot meet with one another and we miss one another and we miss that contact within our congregations, we feel so bereft of one another. And we may be tempted to feel bereft of the Lord, that somehow he has had to keep his social distance from us. He has isolated himself from us in heaven. Nothing could be further from the truth. For God's people in Isaiah's day, When Jerusalem fell and the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, their world fell apart, their faith was shaken. They hadn't seen it coming, they hadn't expected it. And yet through Isaiah, they found a new understanding of the Lord, that he would give strength to the weary. Those who hope in the Lord or wait for the Lord will renew their strength. 
For God's people in John's day, when persecution came, they didn't see it coming. They didn't expect it. And yet they were given this vision of the Lord, assured that he was with them among the lampstands. We didn't see the pandemic coming. We weren't expecting it. We weren't ready for it. And yet, let John train your eye this morning to look and to see that the Lord is among the lampstands. The Lord is in the presbytery of Oma. The Lord is still with your congregation, and the Lord is still with you. John wants us to remember that the Lord is with us. And then we see in this vision how the Lord is holding uh, the angels. The Lord is holding the angels. Now, to be honest, when I hear the word angel, my first thought is of a supernatural being with wings, someone sent by God with a special message or a special errand like Gabriel coming to Mary. And yet the word angel literally means messenger. And so the Lord holding the angels as these churches, it mightn't be a reference to supernatural beings. Perhaps it's simply a, messi- a, a, a reference to the messengers, to the ministers of these congregations in this presbytery in Asia Minor. Now, with that in mind, let me speak what I hope is a word of encouragement to my colleagues in ministry, to remind you that the Lord has been holding you The Lord is holding you, and the Lord will continue to hold you. In the past year, I suppose we all as ministers have been learning new skills that we didn't learn in the college and never thought we would have to learn. How to put together a video, how to edit it, how to upload sermons and sermons, and where to go and find the music. I wonder how many takes you had to take for those sermons at the beginning. And were you happy with what you produced and uploaded? I wonder how fast, or perhaps I should say, how slow are your internet speeds? You're probably zoomed out. Maybe you're tired, frustrated, trying to do pastoral ministry over Zoom or over the phone and by WhatsApp. Many years ago, David found himself under pressure. It might have been that unprecedented time that he was living in, when he'd been driven out of Jerusalem by his son Absalom. And he cries out to the Lord, and David uses a picture of a parent and a child when he says, my soul clings to you, but your right hand upholds me or holds me securely. As we all know, when a parent and child are holding hands, or a parent is carrying a child, it is always the parent's grasp of the child that really matters whether you're a minister or not. Any of us through the pandemic may feel as if we're sometimes just about clinging on in our faith, just about clinging on to the Lord. But let's be assured of this, that the Lord who is among us is the Lord who is holding us. The Lord is among, the Lord is holding And then John hears the Lord declare that he is the first and the last. I am the first and the last. If you don't want to know the score, look away now. Isn't that the warning that we often hear on the weekend news as a sports reporter uh, is about to give the football results? Although I find they rarely give you time to mute the sound or to change the channel before they start giving the results. For generally, you can feel and enjoy the tension of even a replay of a game if you don't know the score. On the other hand, you can relax and you can watch with ease if you already know the score and you know your team has won. When the risen Lord said to the congregations of this presbytery, you know, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I'm alive forevermore. He was in effect saying to them, this is a score. This is a score in advance. Things do look bad. Things are bad at the moment, but that is not the final score or the final picture. 
For at that moment when they received a revelation for John, it must have seemed as if Rome was all-powerful, as if the emperor was all-powerful, as if his governors and his soldiers were in full control and running their lives. But not so. For all authority in heaven and on earth had been given to the Lord who is the first and the last. Just as he had the first word in creation when he said, let there be light, so the last word of history will be his also. For the slaves in Egypt centuries before, Pharaoh must have seemed all-powerful. To the exiles in Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar must have seemed all-powerful. For you and me today, COVID-19 has seemed all-powerful. Oh, we're thankful that restrictions uh, 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 may EVEs as vaccinations take good effect. And indeed, uh, uh, the numbers are declining and uh, numbers of uh, illnesses uh, and deaths have reduced. And we're delighted to see that. We hope and pray it will continue. But even if the pandemic were to disappear tomorrow, some other threat may well take its place and tyrannize your life and mine. So let us remember that the Lord who is among the church, the Lord who is holiness, is the Lord who is the first and the last. Many years ago, when there weren't as many translations of the Bible as there are now, one of the, I think, first 20th century translators is a man known simply by his initials as J.B. Phillips. And he gave us not only a paraphrase of the New Testament, but he also wrote a book with the title, Your God is Too Small. It's a great title, for it reminds us how far too easily we bring God down to our size. And as we face enormous challenges which are beyond us, we somehow fall into the trap of thinking, so they are also beyond the Lord and beyond his ability. Our God may be too small. Facing the challenges of his day, both for himself and for the church of his day, God was, sorry, John was given a picture of the Lord in his power and his glory. After that, there was no way that John would ever think that his God was too small. Now I wonder, is your God too small? Is my God too small? Not, of course, that God is too small, but is our picture, our understanding of him too small? As the virus has dominated our world at large, our church life, personal lives, we need to look afresh with John and with his first readers and see again how great and how powerful is our God. He is the first he is the last. He was dead. He is alive. He holds the keys of death and of Hades. If all the encouraging signs and reports that we are receiving from our authorities are maintained, then we can expect that the threat of this pandemic will ease. Just as for John and the churches of his day, the threat of persecution was to pass. But then and now, once one menace passes, do you know what happens? Another comes to take its place. May we remember the one who is first and last, the Lord of history. Remember how he affirmed that all authority, not only in heaven, but also on earth, has been given to him. And in remembering, find the grace and the strength to persevere and not give up. Every day, we pick up our smartphones. I don't know how many times you do it in the day. And when you pick it up and it lights up, the first thing you see is an image of a loved one. So maybe the next time, maybe later today, when you pick up your smartphone and you see a picture of your loved one, I hope it will make you think of the first chapter of the book of the Revelation. And see there a picture of your loved one. That is, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. The one who calls us afresh to trust him, to love him. And to keep in mind this picture, that of all of the images that come to us through the media, 
Let us turn and see the voice as John turned to see the voice that was speaking to him. For he is with us. And he is holding us. And he is the first and he is the last. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, every day through our TV screens, our mobile phones and social media, we are bombarded with all kinds of information and pictures. And sometimes it is hard to see how things really are. And sometimes it is hard to see you in all of this. Open our eyes afresh, we pray, that we might get a glimpse of you as John received that glimpse, that we might hear from you as the churches heard from John, that you are with us, that you are holding us, that as the Lord of history, you are the first and the last. So may your favor and blessing rest on us. And let me pray for you all in the ancient words a blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace both now and evermore. Amen. Thank you, Rob, for that very encouraging message. John on the island of Patmos was amazed to be in the presence of Jesus. And now the choirs from Six Nile Cross and Clockerney Presbyterian Churches are going to sing the hymn, I Stand Amazed in the Presence of Jesus the Nazarene. congregations in the wider presbytery for their support. 
I also want to pay tribute to our ever-efficient clerk, Reverend Robert Heron, for his guidance and support during the past year. And I'm sure you will join with me now in praying and wishing God's blessing on our new moderator, Reverend Rodney Beacon and his wife Laura for the year ahead. May they know much joy and blessing as they serve our church in this way. I have asked Rodney to lead us now in our prayers of intercession. We join our hearts and minds together as we come before the living God with our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is the faithful witness, with our praise and adoration for the one true and living God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to join together the people from all across Oma Presbytery and further afield we thank you that we can join together in the love and fellowship of Jesus Christ, the beloved Son of God, and to bring before the Sovereign Lord and King of this universe our prayers for others. And Father, we all know that this has been a year like no other, and we want to thank you for your great faithfulness to us, for every good and perfect gift and for every blessing which you have poured upon us new and fresh each and every day. Father, we pray today for our moderator of General Assembly, the Right Reverend Dr. David Bruce and his wife Zoe and their family. We want to thank you, Father, for his leadership for his concern and compassion during this demanding and difficult time. And we pray for continued blessing in his life and indeed in his witness as he continues to lead this your church and as he works with the Reverend Trevor Gribbon and his team in assembly buildings. We ask Father for wisdom and vision for the decisions that must be made as they guide and encourage us through the months that lie ahead. And thanking you, Father, for the way in which you have guided them over this past year. For our own presbytery, we want to thank you for our clerk, Reverend Robert Heron. We want to thank you, Father, for his commitment to your church for his administrative skills, for his openness, for his patience and wisdom, as he seeks to serve you and indeed to help us as ministers and congregations within Oma Presbytery. Father, we want to pray that in seeking to help and guide, we especially bring before you today uh, Jeff Gawn and Graham Reed, uh, two young men from our presbytery who are in training for our ordained ministry. We pray your blessing upon them and on their families as they continue in their studies while juggling home life and at the same time adapting uh, to learning in a new way. May they manage their time well and we ask, Lord, that they would apply themselves to the very best of their ability to both their academic, to their theological and practical modules of their studies. And all the while, we ask, Lord, that they would grow in the knowledge and love of Jesus. We thank you for them and for their fellow students. And indeed, Lord, we thank you for all of the staff at Union College, we pray your blessing upon them as they continue to train ministers of the gospel. And finally, Father, we pray for ourselves and we want to thank you for our outgoing moderator of Presbytery, the Reverend Jonathan Cowan, for his wife Tara and their family. We thank you for Jonathan's faithful service over the past year. 
We ask your blessing upon him and his wife and family. And we pray, Father, for ministers and congregations within our presbytery. We know, Lord, that this has been a different year uh, for all of us. There have been many challenges and disappointments along the way. And despite all of the things that we have had to work our way through, we want to thank you, Father God, for all of the encouragements that we have had and for the opportunity to learn and to adapt and especially to draw closer together in the love and fellowship of Jesus. We have had many things, Father, in which we can rejoice in over this past year. But we especially want to thank you that in your great faithfulness that we have not travelled in the way alone. But you, by your word and spirit, have been with us to guide and to direct, to help and to encourage. You have been there to comfort and to hold. You have been there to correct and to chasten. And you have always been there to love. And so, Father, let us always be bold to share, uh, to witness and to live this glorious gospel of living faith in Jesus Christ. Well, that brings our presbytery service to a close. So thank you for joining in this service of worship. Thank you to all who were involved in preparing uh, the different choir pieces or Bible readings. Mountjoy Choir are now going to finish with one final hymn, which is called, O God of Faith. And I trust that your faith has been uh, built up, that you've been blessed and encouraged in your faith as we have worshipped our God together. But I'm just going to finish now with the words of the benediction. May we all know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit with us. Amen.